Welcome to Bamford Rose and it's forum chat time. In this week's forum chat, we're going to discuss if it's wise that a garage services works on takes care of multiple brands. Now this post come about from a piece on the internet that I took where a dealer was going to move from their current location and whilst they were uh, in the transition period then their workshop was going to be shared with someone somewhere else. Now it doesn't mean that this dealer is doing that today in the future ever. I'm not pinpointing any particular dealer. This is just the question of, you know, you see these uh, quite a lot, especially in America and European countries uh, where Aston sales now aren't that strong. Uh, you'll see that the frontage is maybe uh, Aston, Bentley, Ferrari, maybe Lamborghini, and behind the scenes, it's just one big common workshop. So it doesn't mean that this dealer is gonna do this uh, at all or forever. Uh, it's just using this as an example uh, to bring out to the surface some subtleties that people might not think about when a garage shares multiple brands and then consider if it's a good idea to take your to car to that garage or not. Now if we just think about Aston Martin as a brand then I like to start at DB7. DB7 was just about the first car that you needed a laptop for. Now I say need uh, the laptop on a DB7, even the official AMD S from the factory that connects to a DB7 is nothing more really than a glorified fault code checker and resetter. It's not that clever. It doesn't actually do a lot. And if you didn't have AMD S for DB7, you could get yourself through with a generic fault code reader. There's nothing really special that AMD S on a DB7 does apart from maybe on the V12, set the throttles up, synchronize the throttle, uh, but you could do that with other uh, mechanical devices if uh, if you're a competent workshop. You then get Vanquish. So Vanquish uh, going on from DB7 definitely does need a laptop. You've got to set gear position up, you've got to tune, calibrate the gearbox and clutch. And now you've got a body module uh, that is uh, a little bit intelligent talking to many other modules and you're going to need to interrogate those modules, reprogram those modules. So at Vanquish you are going to need uh, a more sophisticated laptop than a glorified fault code checker. We then get to V8 Vantage and DB9 and all the way up to the Mercedes era and you definitely are going to need a laptop for those cars. So you're going to have to calibrate certain things, reflash certain modules, change config files to get other new superseded parts working. If you go back an era from DB7, you've got the older V8 Vantage, which was sort of mechanical fuel injection, EFI, electronic fuel ignition, all that sort of thing. Doesn't really need a laptop for that. That's programmed. You can't really diagnose too much. If you go back an era from there, you're going to be talking carburetors, ignition points and bashing on and off wheel spinners. This is why in the Aston world, you will have something like the DB era specialist. And this is gonna cover uh, literally what it says on tin, DB2, probably all the way up to uh, those electronic fuel ignition cars of the late 80s, 90s that I just spoke about. You're then gonna have your heritage specialist. Now maybe they'll straddle that carburetor, uh, wheel spinner and points, car uh, but they'll be doing db7 and vanquish you'll then have a new or modern era aston specialist so this is going to be db7 vanquish and it's going to be v8 vantage db9 all the way up to mercedes now if one of those three different specialists try to look after a car in another era it's going to be really really difficult you know if a modern era garage that was used to V8 and DB9 suddenly took on a DB5 or 6, then you're going to have to have someone over the age of 60. They are going to have to know carburetors and points. Try and find someone these days under the age of 30 that really, really knows carburetors and points ignition, and those people are extremely rare. So you've got a workshop uh, 
manpower, labour uh, element to consider when uh, we're talking about cars that span the eras. Now, if you think about all the different types of fixings, gaskets, components, lubes, completely different lube store, uh, a classic DB car is going to need to a V8 Vantage. Then all of a sudden you've duplicated many, many things, not just manpower, but uh, consumables, stores, uh, parts, fixings, everything. This is really, really difficult to now contain and manage, which is why generally you don't see a specialist uh, straddling uh, you know, more than one of those eras, really. But now let's just add another layer. <laughs> just imagine if you looked after Bentleys, uh, Rolls-Royce, Lamborghini, and you've got several different years spanning those models as well, linked in with your Aston. That is too many. Fluids, loops, fixings, electronics, manuals, torque settings, parts, everything to try and manage properly without losing continuity. But you can see why the big PLCs have to do it. Times are getting tough. This is why they're charging £250 an hour plus uh, hourly charge out rates and they're looking after many, many brands. Uh, what that means for you is, is the care of your car compromised for that or is it, is it affected at all? You'd have to say that for a basic service and inspection, it didn't matter how many brands a franchise dealer looked after, they should be able to do that okay. If you're used to seeing the same car on the ramp time and time and time again as a technician, then you just get familiar with everything you're looking at. Uh, preventative maintenance, pipes, for instance, components that are going to fail on the horizon. It becomes very, very easy to identify something that's uh, potentially going to fail or is a miss when you're just used to looking it at it at, on every car after car after car. You know, if you put a Ferrari on the, the ramp, then you put an Aston on the ramp, then you put a Rolls Royce on the ramp, then you get an Aston back on the ramp, you're clearly not going to have that same uh, familiarity or continuity. You know, also fixing something. If you're used to seeing the same car over and over and over again, and they have the same problems over and over again, then it becomes quite quick to identify these problems and then fix them. Instead of not really seeing the same cars and problems all the time, not being familiar with those faults, those faults taking longer to detect and then fix, and ultimately the garage is gonna be charging for time and material. So you know your bill for their lack of continuity is going to be higher. There's lots of subtle things as well on tooling. You know, for instance, on big jobs here like clutches, we can do this quite quickly, only remove the components that are absolutely necessary because we've developed some tools and techniques um, to maybe not take off as much as you have to or the way the factory says do it. Uh, and that means not disturbing um, unnecessary parts of the car. You know, if someone is used to doing clutch after clutch after clutch, then the ratchet with the extension with the right socket and the right flexible joint is already set up on their bench and they don't have to think about it. Uh, quickly undo that fixing rather than not having too much familiarity with the um, strip process, um, not developing those sorts of tools, not taking the car apart quicker, taking off more than they need to. That's important because when cars are a bit corroded, the least you have to disturb um, is better because um, some fixings might not make it. So if you didn't have to remove something because you've developed a better process, then you're better off for not taking it apart. And that lack of continuity just isn't gonna develop that learning. Ultimately, it's why humans go to a doctor and a dog goes to the vet. You know, they don't lump it all in the same roof just to improve their productivity, reduce overheads and improve their bottom line, all at your expense for taking a car to somewhere where they just didn't have the continuity uh, based on being a, a specialist and only working on that one particular thing. So, Easy answer for all of this is, if you pull up to, into the car park and you're asking yourself, is this the right garage for me? Well, look around, see what's in the car park. Because as far as Aston is concerned, if you see a load of DBS Superleggera, DBX, new V8 Vantage, DB11, DB12, 
undergoing major electronic resuscitation, then if you pull up in your classic Vanquish DB9 V8 Vantage, it's probably not the garage for you. Of course, there are many garages that do specialise in that era of car and do choose your garage wisely. That's it for this week's forum chat. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Give us your comments below about what you think about multiple brand garages. Are they specialist enough? And always click us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on next week's forum chat.